Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gode, and today is, I'm going to discuss an interesting case, something which often troubles us um, quite a lot. In fact, it is the case of declining E2 levels. And if you remember, I presented a sh short paper on the vanishing follicle, and which you often see. And so we're going to talk about uh, uh, this case. So the one of the challenges that we see in stim stimulation is when you do estrogen levels, you're expecting a rise of estrogen levels to take place. Now, when that rise does not happen, so when that rise doesn't happen, you are suspecting whether the follicles have stopped growing, when there's been ovulation. And let me go through one of the cases which I dealt with, which will help us to understand this a bit further. Now, this was a lady who was 34 years old with an AMH of 8.2, normal FSH, unexplained infertility, who was stimulated on an antagonist protocol with starting with FSH at 225 and then moving to HMG from day five. Antagonist started on day five. A good recruitment that happened between day five and day nine, a, a, a growth that was... Uh, reasonably at a, uh, a very good trajectory and it all seemed to be going on well. So by day 12, we decided to trigger. So 16 follicles were present. E2 was 10,000 670 p-mole, so that's reasonably high. Follicles were all over the range of 17 millimeter. FSH rise indicated a good serum FSH on the day of trigger. LH rise indicating that there was no premature LH surge, a progesterone of 3.6, and so it all seems in place for a proper trigger. So we triggered using the analog trigger. And when we had a look at day, next day FSH LH, which is, I, I tend to do it 10 hours later, uh, you saw an FSH which was high and LH that had risen and that indicated uh, a period of response, a progesterone of 31.6, again indicating luteinization uh, start of luteinization, and that's again a key indicator of, uh, I, I believe, of maturity. But if you have a look at the E2, it dropped to 6464. So a 40% reduction of E2 levels. And that's a bit worrying. So what I did is I said, let's do an ultrasound scan before the egg collection. And what we noticed that 11 follicles were now present and four follic five follicles had gone. We proceeded with egg collection, got nine eggs, and have currently four blastocysts in the freezer. So what has happened here? We've seen a 40% reduction. And what we know is that any reduction that nears 50%, you're more, you, the, the risk of not getting any eggs gets higher and higher. And But we also know that post-triggering, E2 levels start dropping which is preceding ovulation after the alleged surge in nature, E2 levels steadily start dropping and post ovulation, E2 levels drop dramatically. Now, in this case, what has happened? So if you go back to the paper of vanishing um, or post mature eggs and vanishing follicles, and th they gave a, a plausible uh, you know, option. And what did they say is they said, that follicles that start getting larger, as the progesterone rises, selectively, they start getting luteinized. And because by a physical pressure, they cannot ovulate, they continue to remain luteinized without going through the meiosis process. And that is what could have happened, is, is that some of the follicles would have got luteinized. You see it as a small amount of fluid in the pouch of Douglas. It's not ovulation. You see a higher progesterone level, and you see that follicles have got luteinized. In these cases, as long as you see follicles still present and a large majority still present, go ahead and collect eggs. It is not unnatural 
to uh, to see that follicles, some of the follicles disappear. It's quite normal to see two or three follicles disappear during an IVF cycle. Keep your uh, a watch on and you'll see that from the trigger, you may see one to three follicles missing and that's considered to be the range of normal at times. So don't get perturbed by it. And the reason why this analog trigger works, and I think you should use it more, is because post a, a, a trigger, you have markers which give you a much better idea. And remember, re reproductive medicine is fascinating. If you, you, you do IVF as a, with the fixed routine protocols, it becomes incredibly boring. But use it to understand how luteinization occurs, how estrogen levels are rising. Track your follicle down. See how follicle growth takes place. And all these give you a clear understanding of how stimulation occurs. At the end, it's we who give answers to patients when things don't work. And so going stepwise, looking at it from an analytical approach will help you to come to a diagnosis of why certain things happen. And if you have a look at this, it's a clear idea that gives you, that probably tells you that here, selective luteinization has occurred, but it's still good to go and collect the eggs. Thank you very much. If you do want to follow us, do follow us on Fertility Courses and YouTube, but also on Instagram in Fertility Education. That's where I have started doing one minute lectures of paper presentation every day to make it into a shorter uh, teaching. So they're already close to 150 lectures on Instagram in the last three months. So uh, join us. Let's enjoy spreading knowledge and teaching. Thank you.